Welcome to another video about programming guys. My name is Shabir and today we will talk about compilers and decompilers. So today I will be covering uh, what a compiler is, how does it actually work, uh, what a decompiler is and how does that work also. And finally I'll demonstrate the whole process of compilation, decompilation, explaining it in detail uh, in an example. So if you were to uh, go to Google and uh, you type what a compiler is, the first two searches you'll probably land on is uh, from Technopedia and the second one from lambda.uta.edu, uh, this one right here. Um, and uh, both of them, they pretty much say that a compiler is a software, pro software slash program that transforms a high level source code that is written by a developer in a high level language to a low level language uh, to a low level object code now let me explain that in detail the second uh, uh, the second um, definition is the exact same thing except uh, this one is specific to the java language um, so for before we get into what a compiler actually is, you first need to understand that there's two types of languages. There's the high-level languages, right, uh, such as C Sharp, Java, C++, and then there's the low-level languages. Now, the high-level languages, C Sharp, Java, C++, these are human-readable language. If a normal person picks up an if statement in a piece of code, they will be able to figure out what that if statement is doing eventually okay uh, but if that same person were to look at a binary code which is written into ones and zeros hence the picture right here they will not be able to make sense of anything that's written over here it's too complicated for the human brain but it's very easy for the computer to read this so the compiler all it does it takes your high level language code that you write, uh, write in C sharp Java C++ your, the language that you want it takes that converts it into a binary code because computers do not understand what you write at the high level language they need this one right here now during the compilation process there's many things that happen if you have a syntax error in your code uh, if you have uh, uh, yeah mainly syntax errors if you're missing a library in your code uh, the compiler will warn you nowadays the compilers have gotten uh, much more intelligent uh, with the use of IntelliSense as you're typing they're compiling in the background and they're checking your code so if you're missing a specific library they'll tell you right away hey this this does not make sense what well, do you mean this and then you you most likely you'll say yeah this is what I'm missing I'm missing a library it'll import it for you now during the compilation process what it also does is that you see how there's spaces between your code over here uh, space right here uh, the compiler takes all this code, it removes all the spaces, it removes all the comments, okay, and it's just one big giant file, okay, with all the text uh, smashed together. Sorry about that. With all the text uh, smashed together. And it, it reads it from uh, the, the top to bottom, and it creates a file, uh, a binary file, uh, that it gives uh, with the use of the CPU it gives it loads that file to the RAM and then the RAM is able to execute the entire file for you and hence um, you can see your application on your uh, on the, on your screen so again I repeat computer does not understand C sharp Java or C++ it only understands binary if you remove the compiler you won't not be able to execute your code over here now compilers are not uh, special programs that are invented by gods um, these are main these are programs that are invented by the creators of those languages so sorry about that also so C sharp has its own compiler Java has its own compiler C++ has its own compiler you can't use a Java compiler for a C++ uh, sorry a C sharp or a C++ um, each language has its own specific um, uh, compiler and you too you can write your own compiler if you write your own compiler essentially you're writing your own programming languages your programming language so let's look at what a decompiler is and then I'll show you what everything uh, in, in an example how everything works okay a decompiler 
hence the name uh, basically what it does it takes your uh, compiled code um, into the code into ones and zeros it takes that and it converts it back to the high level language the original source code I forgot to mention that uh, the uh, high level language this is known in the s as the source code and the low level language is known as the target code or the binary code so it takes your um, uh, target code or your binary code or machine code as well it converts it through reverse engineering back to the original source code uh, high level language in which it was written now some some decompilers are very good at uh, decompiling the whole thing for you uh, while others they will give you some pieces of it and are not able to give you the whole code so um, now again if you're if it's your own application and you wanna uh, decompile your own application go right ahead do it but if it's a proprietary software like uh, a word or a software that belongs to a company I do not recommend because it's a it's a crime it's a criminal offense uh, so let's look in let's look at the the example that I have prepared for you guys this is the wrong slide let's look at the example so here I have the example of a small uh, application that I made which uh, calculates your uh, uh, which tells you how many uh, paint uh, gallon of paints you need uh, given a specific height width and the number of rooms so the person would put uh, a height here in feet width here in feet and then the number of rooms that there are and it'll calculate them how many uh, gallons will the person need assuming that one gallon is equal to 350 uh, feet so if I look at my source code if I look at uh, the, the code this right here is the source code from top to bottom right here these are the libraries that the program is using and this is the main core of the program and then over here I have some other functionality that's happening so you see how there's all these empty spaces and I have some code that's commented out uh, all this stuff when I when I click on when I right click on the solution and I click build okay what it's doing is that uh, it's building me it's compiling this application for me removing all the spaces over here it uh, ignores all the, the the comments over here and it generates one uh, it, it basically generates because this is a Windows application it generates an exe file which is located right here so if I open this file right here this file was generated because I clicked on built if I don't if I click clean this file is not there anymore you see the file is not there anymore because I click clean so if I click on a build or rebuild it puts back that file over there this exe file now when this file when I click on start over here what the computer is doing in the background it picks that file up ships it off to the RAM to the RAM okay and the RAM is able to execute the entire application for me so I could write the uh, specific measurements and I see let's say I have 20 rooms over here and click calculate it tells me that I, ha I need three gallons of paint for this specific uh, uh, estimation so this is what's happening during the compilation process now the decompilation process it's the uh, opposite of this so what people will do is they'll take uh, the this file right here the application file and they'll give that to uh, a decompiler which will convert the uh, binary code t back to the original source code if I try to open this into in notepad all I see is gibberish I do not understand this but when the computer loads it he's able to understand this because it's written in uh, I'm trying to load it into a plain text but if you were to load this into a hex editor it will you will see uh, all binary codes over here so uh, I don't have a decompiler on my machine uh, but the process would be uh, as simple as 
taking this file giving it to the specific software uh, decompiler and then he'll do the whole process for you regenerating the whole code back uh, there are a lot of free decompilers available out there uh, one of them uh, I have used a couple in the past let me see So decompiler, is it legal? So there, there's a .NET uh, decompiler right here, .peak. So you can download this de this decompiler, give it your executive executable file, and uh, you'll be able to uh, regenerate your entire source code from it. Uh, .peak is the name of uh, this company. Uh, sorry, the name of this application. So that was it for today, guys. I hope. Uh, I have shed some light on uh, compilers and decompilers and the high level and low level languages. If you have any questions uh, or you would like to hear uh, some more information about any further topics you have, just put it in the comment section and I will get to it as soon as possible. Thank you very much and please do share this video with uh, the people you think will benefit from this and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys uh, in the future. Thank you very much.